Hello, I'm Matthew Munoz. Uh, my mentor for this project was Dr. Zambon, and this is whole genome ARVISTA identification of transcription factors for co-regulated genes. So I'm going to tell you about some common problems we have with expression data in biology and how a tool called Whole Genome ARVISTA can solve those problems and some improvements for that software that I've been working on and uh, some possible directions for the future of those improvements. So microarray experiments are very common in biology, but the expression data that you get out of microarray experiments are not readily interpretable. But uh, fortunately, there's a solution to this. Transcription factor binding sites can link the gene expression data to the biological explanations that we want. What do I mean by this? Well, say you're a biologist performing a microarray experiment. You get some sort of expression data out of it. You filter that by fold change, and now you have a text file full of a list of genes. Well, a list of genes isn't really a biological story. It's just a list. And if you want to study those genes, the typical gene list that comes out of this sort of micro experiment is hundreds of genes long. So you have to ask yourself, what am I going to spend all that time and money looking at? Well, ideally, you want to be looking at the transcription factors that are controlling the, that set of genes. So a transcription factor is a protein. You can see transcription factor here. And transcription factors regulate target genes by binding on the genome to things called transcription factor binding sites. And so they can increase or decrease the pressure of the expression of target genes by binding to the genome. And when you get that gene list out of your microarray experiment, it's not necessarily going to have those transcription factor genes in that list, but the binding sites for the transcription factors are going to be on the genome regardless. But there is another problem. Those binding sites are very short, which means that they're going to occur randomly. And that means if you look just by binding site sequence, you're going to get a lot of false positives, and you're going to find those binding sites for transcription factors everywhere. So evolutionary conservation is evidence of functionality. So if we find the same transcription factor binding site in the same place between a human and a mouse, we can you know, conclude that this binding site is probably biologically functional, isn't just a result of random mutations. And a statistical test of overrepresentation can complement conservation by showing us whether a transcription factor is overrepresented uh, in a gene relative to the rest of the genome, rather than simply being present or not present. All right, so Whole Genome ARVISTA is a tool that can automate this process for us. Uh, before the user ever sees anything, a database is pre-computed of transcription factor binding sites, and that's done by getting orthologous genes based on whole genome alignments, and looking at the proximal promoter regions of all those genes, and searching for transcription factors uh, with the TransFact database, and only those transcription factors that are conserved between related species are kept in the database. Well, the user comes along with their list from their microarray experiment of genes, and the database is queried for those binding sites that are connected to those genes, and a statistical test is performed to find out which transcription factors are overrepresented in the user's gene list. <coughs> well, you may be asking yourself, can't I already do all of this with ChIP-seq? Well, ChIP-seq is a biological method of determining transcription factor binding sites by experiment, but it requires very complicated protocols, and most importantly, you need some a priori biological information. You need to know which transcription factor you're looking at beforehand. With Whole Genome ARVISTA, you have a method that's very inexpensive, very fast, and you don't need to know which transcription factor you're looking for beforehand. Any transcription factor in the database can show up in your results, so you can actually be surprised. And since Whole Genome ARVISTA is independent of ChIP-seq, you can actually use it to validate ChIP-seq results. But we can do better than this, I think. So I've been working on some improvements for Whole Genome ARVISTA, specifically custom background sets of genes, the ability to export to the UCSC genome browser, querying by transcription factors, and then another project entirely, so the Skunk Works, called in silico chip 
which allows uh, users to create their own databases of transcription factor binding sites. So background. Well, I said earlier that there was a statistical test to see which transcription factors were overrepresented. Now that's relative to the genome, but when you do a microarray experiment, you aren't necessarily looking at the whole genome. You're looking at only those genes that are present on the microarray. So when you look for overrepresentation of transcription factors, you are also you also want to look at overrepresentation of transcription factors versus those genes that were on your microarray. So I've implemented this. You can submit your own background genes. And as you can see at the bottom here, when you use the whole genome as a background set, you get a different set of results from when you use, for example, only the genes that are on a microarray. It's more specific. <clears throat> All right, so another common uh, circumstance in the microarray data is you have two gene lists, actually, instead of one. One list of upregulated genes, another list of downregulated genes. And so say I put both of those gene lists into whole genome R vista, and I get the same transcription factor out. Well, if the two lists of genes are regulated by the same transcription factor, why is there a difference in expression? Well, bed formatted output allows visualization alongside other publicly available data on various genome browsers. So you can try to figure out the answers to these questions. And this is just an example looking, here's a HIF transcription factor binding site, and here is a public histone modification data. So you can try to figure out between your different gene lists what's actually going on under different conditions. All right, and so we, we know now in biology that most SNPs, single nucleotide polymorphisms, that are associated with disease occur in non-coding regions, specifically near transcription factor binding sites. And so this bed, the same bed formatted output uh, lets you find regulatory SNPs. So here's a different HIF site, and there is a single nucleotide polymorphism. All right, so in addition to helping out with microarray experiments, the database, the transcription factor binding site database, is pre a repository of pre-computed conserved transcription factor binding sites between different species. So say you were interested in the binding site, not the gene experiment. Well, there's now sort of a reverse lookup. You can just enter a transcription factor name and see everything that's conserved between two species and do whatever you want with that data. And just to show you sort of the complexity of this data, I generated this graph by, uh, with a tool called Circos, and over here on the left, you can see the location of the HIF1 gene on chromosome 14, and sort of radiating out from that are these gray lines uh, representing connections to conserved HIF1 binding sites on the human genome. So that's quite a lot of binding sites. All right. so. Uh, the long-term application of this is in silico chip, which will allow users to generate their own pre-computed databases for performing these sort of experiments with custom parameters. Maybe your own species, you want to look at your own set of species, you want to use different measures of conservation, look in different places for promoters, use a different alignment algorithm, different binding site database, or sometimes transcription factors cluster together and you want to only look at those clusters. So to summarize. Expression data lacks explanatory power. Whole Genome RVista provides those explanations. And the improvements I've been working on utilize more biological information to improve that analysis. I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Zanbon for being my mentor, Dr. Ivan Ovcherenko for writing the original RVista software, Dr. Inna Dubchak and Alexander Polyakov over at LBL who are collaborating with us on this, CalIT2 for hosting, I Dash and DBMI for organizing the internship, and the American Heart Association and NIH for funding. Thank you.